So I ran my results, ran my data, went into R, ran it, stored it as an object called XG, and just did a summary of XG. I'll post the R script at some point. I'll post at least partial data. I don't post all my NWSL data just because I haven't done everything with it yet, so I don't want to give, um, give it away yet. But I'll probably post a partial data set at least, so if you want to play with this, you can. My formula just was goal, and that's did it score a goal or not. Diff is the game state. Y is the um, vertical distance from goal. Angle is the angle to the center of the goal. Uh, time is the time in the game. Pressure is was the player under pressure. Did they have a defender within half a yard or so? Um, foot is, was it kicked? Was it on a counterattack? Was it by the home team? Was it the result of a goalkeeper error? Was it off a free kick? Was it off a corner kick? These are all, these things I just mentioned right here, are all my explanatory variables. And I talked about most of those earlier, if not all of them. This is my dependent variable, goal. So scoring a goal is a function of all these things. All these variables right here effectively add up to whether you scored a goal or not. They all matter. There might be more, but these are the ones I chose for my analysis. The rest here, family, family binomial link equals probit. That's something called probit regression. Uh, it's a bit advanced for this lecture here. Um, we'll worry about it later. Um, but there you go. Deviance residuals, coefficients, significance codes, etc., etc. I'm going to go through this all step by step here. Um, and I'm going to, the titles of my next several slides are lyrics from the New Kids on the Block song, Step by Step. Um, stop, watch that for a minute, enjoy the greatness of the 1990s and what we thought was good back then, and then come back with me. So, step one is what I did before. I showed you the formula. Uh, GLM is a generalized linear model, all these sorts of things. Um, my variables right here, data. Family equals binomial, link equals probit, and probit, I do want to talk about that for a minute actually. Probit regression is when you have a what we call a dichotomous dependent variable. So a dependent variable is did the person score a goal or not? Did the woman score a goal or not? That's either a yes or a no. It's a one or a zero. It's binary. Because it's that, we use probit regression. Um, that's all you really need to know about that. You want to get fancy, you can, but the reality is it's just sort of cut and paste. If it's that type of model, dichotomous variable, use a probit. Done. Dependent variable, all my explanatory variables right here. Easy enough. Step two, it prints up all my coefficients for me. And I'm going to go through those individually, but this is the substance of the regression here. You see your estimate, your standard error, your z-value, probability, the names of all your variables, etc. So the coefficients column. What this tells you is basically which variable are you looking at. So the second line is the diff, which is the difference in goals. Y, again, is the distance, angle, etc. Everything in this row matches up with the variable on the left here. The intercept is the B. We talked about that earlier. It's the Y equals MX plus B. Well, the intercept is the B. Don't worry about that for now. Um, don't worry about it. So the estimate. And this is effectively the size of the effect. Don't interpret this number as anything. Your predicted values, which we'll show you later, will do that. But for now, this is just the size of the estimate. Look for positive or negative, and then look for, eventually we're going to look at stars or a period. Um, this is all I teach my Intro to American Government students. Look for stars, look for positive or negative. If it's negative, there's a negative correlation between the two variables. If there's stars, it's significant. If there's no stars, it's not significant. No stars, ignore it. Stars, it matters. Negative, negative correlation. Positive. Positive correlation. Easy enough, right? So, for example, we look at the distance from goal here, my y. And there's three stars, so we know that's statistically significant. We know it has a significant effect on the likelihood of scoring a goal. The further you are from goal, the lower your chance 
of scoring goal is. And we know that because it's a negative coefficient. As distance goes up, likelihood of scoring a goal goes down. Does the time the shot's taken matter? And we look here, there's no stars. Therefore, it's not significant. Therefore, time does not affect the expected goal value. Done. Last one here, counterattack. Was the goal scored on a counterattack? There's stars. It's positive. So if the shot is taken as a result of a counterattack, as a fast-moving attack, it's more likely to score. Go through that for each of these variables. Um, if this sort of doesn't make intuitive sense to you, like I said, go to my uh, prediction model video for the NWSL. I explain it in a lot more detail there. I don't want to reiterate too much. Um, but it's a good place to get a refresher, to get maybe even sort of a second option of this, second viewing of this sort of thing. Like I said, here's the stars. Ignore all the rest of this. Um, unless you're looking to you know, be sort of advanced at this, you don't need to know anything about this standard error z value probability. Don't worry about that for now. All I want you to get from this is look to see if there are stars. And if there are stars, that means it's statistically significant. It matters. X affects Y. This variable right here in the coefficient column, if there's stars next to it, it affects your likelihood of scoring a goal. If there's not, it doesn't. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, it's a fairly complicated concept. It's something I spent three or four weeks on in my research methods class in political science. I've given it a good seven minutes here. Um, but I, hopefully that works.